Now we want to talk about two different types of forces. Now actually there are many different kinds of force. So we talked about the fundamental forces of nature. So that was gravity, electromagnetism, the strong nuclear and the weak nuclear forces. So those were the fundamental forces that control the universe. Uh, later we will talk about centripetal force, which is the force that causes something to go around in a circle. Uh, but we want to concentrate on two types of forces today. One is going to be weight, the other is going to be friction. So let's first talk about the force of gravity, which is going to be uh, your weight. So the force of gravity acting on you is what's going to cause your weight. And we're going to symbolize that with a WT. So your weight is going to be the same as the force of gravity acting on you and that's going to be equal to uh, a negative because gravity pulls down and down is a negative number and then your mass and then the acceleration due to gravity. So if you recall in lesson number three we introduced this concept the acceleration caused by gravity. And that thing, was, uh, so G was equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's the magnitude of G. And then we could also put a negative sign on it because G is pulling down. Okay, so the force is going to be your mass and then multiplied by G, which is 9.8, and then we put the negative sign on there because it's going to be pulling down on it. So that's how you would calculate your weight. So let's do an example here. What is the weight of a 30 gram object? So first we're going to write down what we're given and what we're looking for. So the mass, M, is going to be 30 grams, but that's the wrong unit. So the official metric unit for mass is the kilogram. Kilo means a thousand. So we need to take 30 divided by a thousand, and then that's going to be 0 .030 kilograms. And then we want to find the weight. All right, so our formula is that weight is equal to mg, so we're going to take our mass, which is going to be 0 .030, and then multiply that by 9.81, if you want to go to three significant figures. If you want to go to two significant figures, it would be uh, 9.8, and then if you really want to go to one significant figure, you could just say 10. But we're going to go to three significant figures, and so when you multiply that together, you get 0.29 and then put the N on the end of it because your weight is a force and forces are measured in Newtons. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh but that's wrong because your weight would be kilograms and then meters per second squared because the kilogram goes with that meters per second squared goes with that. So this ought to be the unit for weight and you're perfectly correct. So this thing is a Newton. But if you were uh, writing a paper and you were giving that to somebody else, they may not realize that that is weight. They might realize that a Newton is a unit of force, but not this thing. But it's okay. So if on the exam, if you wrote it this way, that would be perfectly okay. And then also notice uh, you don't need to put the negative sign on it. So you didn't need to say negative 0.29 newtons. Okay, the negative just tells you the direction that the force is going in. So you'll notice that on your bathroom scale, it doesn't say 
that you weigh negative 140 pounds. It just says you're weighing 140 pounds or you weigh 40 newtons. Okay, so that it gives you a positive number and it's implied that the force of gravity pulls downwards on you. Okay, here's another example. You have two balls that are dropped from the same height onto the floor. Ball a, uh, B is 10 times more massive than ball A. Assuming no wind resistance, which ball is going to hit the ground first? So let's visualize this as we're going to, it says that ball B is 10 times bigger. So let's have a big ball and this one is ball uh, B and it is ball B down there and it's 10 times bigger and let's put over here this one is going to be ball A. It's a little one. They're both going to be dropped at the same time from the same height and they're both going to hit the ground. So the question is which one hits the ground first? This was a big deal back in Galileo's day. So back when the scientist Galileo was alive, uh, people thought that the heavier ball uh, is going to have be faster than the little ball. Okay, what do you think? So what do you think when they both hit the ground? Now, do, uh, do assume no wind resistance. So if this was done on the moon, where there was no air in, in there, and you dropped them, which one would hit the ground first? Okay, you made your prediction. All right, so now what we're going to do is write Newton's second law for each one of them. So we're going to have the force on A is equal to the mass of A times the acceleration of A. And then we'll write the equation a second time with B's. So we'll say the force on B is equal to the mass of B times the acceleration of B. All right, but what is the force that is acting on the two balls? Gravity. And what did we just say that gravity was? Mg. So instead of F, Let's substitute mg for each one. So we would have mass of A, g, equals mass of A, the acceleration of A. And then the other one would be mass of B times g equals mass of B, acceleration of B. But notice the m is on both sides. So you can cancel out the m's. And then what do you find out? That the acceleration of B is going to be equal to G and the acceleration of A is also going to be equal to G. So if they're both being accelerated by the same amount, then that means they're going to have the same speed when they hit the floor and it's going to take the same amount of time for both of them to hit the floor. Like I said, this was a big deal. So this is the, uh, they think that Galileo went to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa and took a cannonball and took a little ball and dropped them just to show the people that they would both hit the ground at the same time. They probably won't allow you to do that today. So if you go to Pisa, they'll probably arrest you for dropping something from the top of the tower. But anyway, that's what he did. And so it's a big deal. So it shows that you could take a piano and you could take a ping pong ball. And if you dropped them on the moon to where there was no wind resistance, they would both hit the ground at the same time. Now, if you include wind resistance, then it turns out that the ping pong ball is going to be moved more than what the uh, piano is, so that the piano would hit the ground first and then the ping pong ball.
Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about the force of friction.